Good afternoon. I was here in um, April 2016, and um, we spoke about um, our project in Balcuda to um, bring fibre um, into the properties in the Glen. At that stage, we thought we had all the funding in place, and um, we believed that we were going to start in 2016, but it didn't quite work out that way. However, where we've got to at the moment is we've actually started, and we've been laying fibre, and we've been connecting houses um, in, in our very rural area. And uh, this is just a wee quick update of um, how we proceeded and, and where we are at the moment. So Balcuda is um, stuck in the National Park. Um, we are kind of north of Glasgow and about an hour and a half from Edinburgh here if you are driving by car or slightly longer if you're going by train, because you get to, to get to Bridge of Allen first to, to catch the train. So that's where we're situated. And this is just a, a picture of the Glen. The Glen's an east-west Glen. It's surrounded by mountains on three sides. Um, well, actually, it's probably surrounded by mountains on four sides, but the main A84 runs up the east side, uh, basically, of the Glen, and that's where the entrance is. There's, um, you, you just get in and come back out again. So it's about eight miles long, and then the other bit's going up to the north to Eden Kip and going down to um, Ballymore and the couple of farms down there just about extends it. So we're, we're looking at a core network of about between 36 and 40 kilometres um, of core um, fibre to be laid. And... Um, a lot, of, a lot of house connections and some very remote properties uh, in that. But we were determined that we were going to connect everyone and that's the way we were wanting um, basically to do this. And here's some pictures of the Glen. It kind of shows you we've got two lochs um, there. We have, um, we have mountains and we have a lot of snow um, in the winter at times. And we have... We have farmers um, with their own diggers that are helping us, and we, we have our own built um, plough that was ploughing in um, some of the conduit um, when, when we started this. And we've, we've done about 10 road crossings, um, and we had to bring in a contractor to do, to do that. And, um, but they're, they're done, so we're ready with the road crossings, and we're just continuing to, to lay the fibre. So what have we got? We've got about 197 properties um, in, in, in the Glen. There's probably 100 businesses, but that's really coming down to taking into account kind of home workers and, 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 and things like that. Residents are between about 200 and 250, um, and we've got quite a few uh, schoolies, children and, and younger children uh, in the Glen. So, so we've, we've, it's, it's quite a diverse community. If you look at these properties, then we have a, we have a boutique hotel, uh, Monaco Moor, which is at the top of the Glen, so it's um, six miles um, up the, a single track road, um, but it, it's quite an important one. We've got uh, another motel um, just at the start of the Glen. We've got another restaurant um, just stop the 84 from that, and we've got um, a holiday park that's in there. It's about 12 farms, all told. There's quite a lot of tourists and self-catering and in Airbnb restaurants in there. We, we have quite a number of um, businesses that are technology-related. Re We've got one company that um, is into health marketing and, and works um, across the UK in relation to that. We obviously have some forestry and builders and construction. We have quite a few home workers and professionals. We've got two shops and we've got a whole number of, of, of um, people that need to work at night or indeed the internet when they get home in relation to that. So where were we? I mean, this is going back to 2016. Basically, um, we were on, you were either on ADSL or you were on satellite, and we were exchange-only lines um, to the two exchanges at um, two different villages that are not in our area. The ADSL speed was, for some people um, who lived uh, at the top of the Glen, nothing at all. They couldn't get anything um, over it. It was too far from the exchange. To if you were um, down where it meets the, the, 
the A84, you are getting about 5 uh, megabits um, per second in relation to that. But in the village where I lived, if you got 1.8, it was a good day. And if it wasn't a good day, you'd probably get something like by 0.01 uh, or, 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 or something like that for a period of time. At the moment, there's no 3G or 4G mobile phone coverage uh, in the Glen, although we now have two EE masts, um, but they haven't been switched on. And we have a Vodafone um, O2 mast, which uh, three years ago applied for um, planning permission to turn it into uh, 4G, but it hasn't been switched on yet either. Um, so we, we don't have anything like that. And obviously, with the Internet of Things and everything that we've heard from the last speaker, the demand for good internet, especially in rural areas where the farmers need to use the internet to get their, their, their grants and money and things like that, it's, it's really very strong. So, where are we? 2013, we set up a community interest company, um, Balkudar uh, Community Broadband. We've been in partnership um, with um, Bogons, with Brandon um, at the back there, since about 2015. We had a, in 2015, with some promise of some money from Community Broadband Scotland um, at a de minimis level, we, we had a, a, an ITT. Um, we, had, we had responses from two um, wireless companies and we had a response from Brandon. And obviously, um, the opportunity of getting a full fibre solution was really attractive to us. And, and Brandon has been working with us really in partnership um, with, with, with the community um, and, and ourselves um, in relation uh, to that. The problem, problem with that happened when the business voucher scheme, which we were looking at providing the second bit of the state funding um, to this, collapsed in October 2015, so we were a bit stuck for a period of time. But then we got a bit of help from Stirling Council, because Stirling Council decided at the end of that year that they were going to put um, capital money aside to help rural communities within the Stirling area uh, to get better broadband. And we had quite a good um, project at that stage, and we were quite well developed, you know, basically in relation to that. And we spoke to Community Broadband Scotland again, and they, at that stage, said, yeah, we'll give you more money, we'll take it out of the de minimis um, money, and alongside Stirling Council, basically, we thought we were, and this is where we were in 2016, in April, we thought, the money's coming in, we can start in, um, in um, well, August, September um, of 2016. However, then we encountered public procurement rules. And public procurement rules then said you have to go to another full tender. And that took us really from March 2016, pretty much all the way around to March 2017, when um, we ended up with a, a legal problem with the way the procurement, was, the procurement was run. And we ended up with our legal advice saying, eh, you are in danger if you follow the rules that Community Broadband Scotland uh, are saying you need to follow, whereas the legal advice for Community Broadband Scotland was that <laughs> we would be in danger if we didn't follow their rules in relation to that. So we, we came to an impasse. Um, and one other thing that had happened in the meantime was that um, because of the new emergency services network, um, BT had actually run fibre pretty much into the Glen, where they'd run it all the way down, and it stops about 100 metres from my house, which was quite convenient, and that happened at, at the end of 2017. So that kind of changed you know, the cost of backhaul and everything else, because it was right in the place where... Um, we wanted to get a fibre uh, connection in relation to that. So we had a quick conversation again with, um, with um, Community Broadband Scotland because we had, we had funding from, um, still confirmed from Stirling Council, and we, we asked CBS if they would bump it up to de minimis level. We had support from, 
from Brandon and Borgons, and we thought we could probably we could probably run the project your, um, from that. They said yes, and then a couple of months later they said we've no money. <laughs> so anyway, in the meantime, we've started the project. Uh, we've we've built um, we have one cabinet um, at Stronvar right next to the end of the BT fibre, um, which is operating. We have a free Wi-Fi hotspot um, at that, and we've had that since, since around about last September, nearly a year, which is very popular, especially with our youngsters. Um, and it's very popular with our home workers who, uh, in the evening, if they, they need a good connection, they pop down there in their car, log on, do the download, do their work, then go home again um, in relation to that. So, so, so that works pretty well in relation to that. And then between Leader and Stirling Council, we got um, a small amount of money and were able to employ a project officer. Um, and we did it as a job share uh, process. So we've got one um, project officer who does the kind of um, project management and we've got one project officer who does a lot of digging for us um, in that. So, so that, works out, that works out pretty well. So where are we? We've got a gigabit um, connection back to um, the bunker at Comrie that, um, that Brandon and Bogons run. We've got about 15K of the 36 or so um, already laid uh, in relation to that. We've got 38 properties connected. That's as of today and starting tomorrow we've got another 22 properties that we're ready to splice uh, and get connected you know, in relation to that. So with 38 properties, that's 20% um, 20 down the project. And if we get these um, next 22 done um, if in the next few days um, with, with, with the splicing, then that will take us up to 30%, which is, which is not too bad, I think. We've also got two properties um, connected by a wireless link at this moment in time, just temporary. We did one for this hotel that I was telling you about because in May, um, every year, they run a major festival. And we get about 6,000 people coming into the Glen. Uh, and they come and camp all the way down this single track road. So it's done in convoy system, so, you know, so that the traffic is there. Um, but we hadn't got the fibre to that, so we set up a, a, a wireless link from one of the properties um, across the loch, and it worked pretty well. So they've connected, so, that, so that's running um, in relation to the track. So that was that one. And the bunker, Brandon, uh, I think, in 2016 spoke a bit about the bunker, but um, he's operating in there, and he's also operating... Um, in other areas round about um, the, the Comrie, um, County Bragan um, area in, in that respect. And the last bit is just some pictures of this is the work that we've been doing. We had to, we had to cut across this listed bridge um, and they insisted that we cut down the middle of it. So we did that. And um, there's pictures of us out there working in all sorts of weathers digging the fibre, laying the fibre, blowing the fibre, and doing the splicing and um, getting people connected. And that's it. Thank, thank, thank you for your time. Any questions for David? No. Sorry? Why did we cross the bridge in that way? That was the way the council insisted that we did it. We had to get across the bridge. Uh, we we had a specialist, um, what do you call it, um, who might have um, dug it for us or bored it, but it's rock. Uh, he said it would be, you know, you, you just couldn't. We had a, we have a, got a second bridge that we had to cross, which was a slightly smaller one around there. Um, at the moment, we've got it temporarily hung on poles, and I believe that by the end of the week, the park will give us permission to pin it on the outside of the bridge because the council wouldn't let us bury it on the bridge from this one. <laughs> and that's it. Excellent. Thanks, David. Okay.